It's the Two Johnnies Podcast. The Two Johnnies Podcast. Two Johnnies recording a podcast. Hello, hello, hello. You're welcome to the Two Johnnies Podcast, bringing you all the mayhem and news from the world of the Two Johnnies. I'm Johnny B. And I'm Johnny Smacks. Welcome to episode 55 of the Two Johnnies Podcast, now coming to you in both sound and vision from our state-of-the-art studio, formerly Johnny B's good room in our HQ in Care County Tipperary. Even though it's award season, forget the Oscars, we've got the Johnnies Awards, featuring numerous categories, including person you'd most like to avoid at a house party. And he's hurling's answer to Mr. Miyagi. Instead of wax on, wax off he tells lads to drive it drive it drive it noel furlong will be here with the news she's got one more week of her hand being in a cast and then she's going back up baiting lads maureen's in the house she'll be here with a mystery topic and we attempt to solve another listener's problem in our segment dear johnny's and we round off the podcast as is tradition with our yurts and dirts of the week yurt Yurt and and dirt dirt. before commencing with proceedings matters arising from last week's podcast mr chairman yes mr chairman uh lots of correspondence in about relationship milestones we were discussing on last week's podcast now lolly got in touch to say love the podcast my journey every monday evening on the m1 which is always gridlock is far by is by far the best journey of the week because you keep me entertained thanks lolly anyway i'm right in regards last week's discussion about meeting parents when i moved to london in february 1996 i met a lad from dublin and i was still a full-blown culture from mayo and we started going out that summer, we both went home to meet each other's parents. His mum was the first port of, port of call, as we were very nervy on the trip. A trip to his local to calm the nerves. That was in order. We came home, more drink appeared, and so did a Ouija board. Oh, for f- <laughs> sick. I'm not shitting you. She decided to play it and talk to the date. This is the only time... I have played one. It freaked the shite out of me and I was glad to get the bogger bus and head back out west. Then he met my folks. I'm from a farm and my dad was delighted as he was an extra pair of hands when moving cattle. Him being a city boy with no experience, he stood in the gap and his lovely chinos. Remember this was 1996 now? Gee, I'm surprised there weren't cards. <laughs> <laughs> the cattle decided his trousers were shit-throwing target so they all got 180 with the bullseye. He was duly informed by my father after the fact his choice of trousers were not advisable in farming. He said, good clothes are only for mass, <laughs> which is where we were heading after the said incident. Anyway, the story doesn't have a happy ending. We split up about a year later. And funny enough, the Ouija board didn't predict that. What? Wow, a Ouija board. I freak out. I'd be gone straight out of the house. He'd be gone. He'd be on a scrap heap as well. Talking uh, to the dead lad. <laughs> Talking to the dead lad. The first time going meeting the parents. Fucking though. dubs, huh? <laughs> Talk to each other. Mark from Wicklow was in touch. He said, was listening to the podcast there last week on the topic of meeting the future in-laws and couldn't help but share my first encounter story. My girlfriend and I met while studying in Dublin last year. What makes us different is that herself was studying as a part of a year abroad program from her college in Massachusetts. To make a long story short, when the time came to part ways in May, we said that we'd stay dating because we were both fairly keen on each other and fairly comfortable with the whole long distance thing, as it shouldn't be for too long. So she was going home after us going out for a good few months at this stage, having met my family a few times, so the mammy seal of approval was sorted on my part. For me, however, I hadn't as much as spoke to her parents over the phone. They had just seen a few pictures of us together and whatnot. (laughs) So needless to say, the more time got between me and her family, the more I worried about making a half-decent impression. We had agreed that I'd head over at the end of the summer when we had both finished up our summer work, so the flights got booked from the start of December. This was also my first time leaving the country at the age of 21, which a lot of young lads from farm and backgrounds can relate to because how could a man leave the farm at peak straw bailing yeah. season? Yeah, proper order. I arrived on a Friday afternoon. Initial arrival went well, was able to make plenty of conversation about the weather and whatnot, but the real deal was the girlfriend's cousin's wedding on the Saturday. Yes, the next day. The aunties, the uncles, the whole lot would be at it, so I had to be on the ball. Went to the ceremony in the church, which went well. Then it was off to the afters, which was in this fancy golf club type spot, typical of the films like. Like any wedding at 3 o'clock in the day, you'd be fairly hungry and they were going around serving tapas style food. And what caught my eye... Tapas! pieces of steak i'm going to guess that is we got allocated a table which was in the middle of the function room and i started into these steak pieces the girlfriend says we had we may head outside to get photos taken so i shove one in my mouth to eat quick as we're walking out along i begin to choke i try to get it back up but there's nothing happening as i begin to panic 
And as I look to my girlfriend in desperation, she just smirks, thinking I was, and quote, being a dick and was messing. So here I am, first time leaving the country, trying to make an impression to the girlfriend's family, and I'm making a holy show of myself choking. All I could think to myself was, I can't die here. What would man think? I forgot what happened due to the pure panic, but some lad came and gave me the high mech, and all was good. Died of mortification, but sure, a lad can recover from that. To top it all off, afterwards, I was introduced to the scary auntie who referred to me as the guy who was choking. She went on to say how she was pleased with her seating position, which I noticed was close to the bar. And sure didn't I say, isn't it great you're grand and close to the bar? Little did I know the lady was a recovered alcoholic. Ah. It ended up being great crack in the end, and we all had a class night. Me and the girlfriend are still going strong and are huge fans of the podcast and your music. The mug would be great for herself to make the tea taste that bit better. Keep it up, lads. Fair fucks them, lads. I haven't <laughs> I haven't read something that long since the leaving cert, I'd say. Brilliant. That's that's a great story. You alright? Yeah, no, I'm good, yeah. I'm good. <laughs> Mickey from Derry, living in the Bronx, New York, said Got a good story about the relationship milestones. Oh, no, he's from Derry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Was going with this girl for a year or so. Things were on the rocks for a while. A lot of arguing, etc. Had a holiday to Pozna booked. That's in... S- um, Santa Ponza, lad. That's what that is. Oh, Ponza? Yeah. I thought it was Pozna in Poland. No. Ponza. They were going on holidays to the Ponza, I right? tell you, I wouldn't recommend bringing a, a woman to the Ponza. Whatever you like bringing, bringing sand to the desert by, huh? Bringing the RT guide to the library. Huh? <laughs> Anyway, they were supposed to be going to Santa Ponza on holiday in July together, but the relationship was under rocks. I ended up breaking up with her nine days before the holiday. Gave her 400 euro pound, he is down here. Oh, he's in Derry, sorry. Yeah. 400 pound, mind you, as a goodwill gesture to go on a holiday with the girls. I was going with the lads to Santa Ponza a month later. She tells me she is going at the same time a week before we head off. So it's going to the same place at the same time. Oh my god. I get Snapchats of her going mad with her mates in all the bars, etc. So I steer clear of them while I'm out there. Long story short, her friends told me a few months later she never was in Santa Ponza. Only told me that to mess with me and use the years before's pics and videos, uploaded them using some weird app to make it look believable. Definitely a milestone in the sense to stay the hell away from that. Keep up the good work and hurry back out to New York. That's that's. Jeez, that's that's law. That's malicious. That is law. That now. is a bad bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know. Mar, that that's that's like something you do. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do that in front of me, devious. <laughs> that is. I like you style. Wow, she went to some... Yeah, Mickey, hopefully we'll be out in New York very soon. Uh, Column1997 on Snapchat was in touch. He said, just listening to the to there about who you should introduce the missus to first. Honestly, the friends are going to meet her first, and the friends will be brutally honest. My best friend is a girl, and I've been friends with her for 17 years. Oh. She's told me on numerous occasions that she's going to judge whatever girl I'm with and be brutally honest with me. So the friends will meet her first, but when she meets the parents, they won't tell you what they really think and just try and act happy for you, even if they despise her. Not my mother, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, lads, oh, yeah. my mother texts me after hearing last week's um, podcast saying, just remember your parents have a lot of life experience. No. Okay. Just because I, I said like, uh, I wouldn't be taking their opinion that much on board. <laughs> oh. It was a spicy reaction to you, Mara. What? You saying you wouldn't go with a lad if you didn't get sealed approval off your dad. Yeah. yeah there was a couple was. of people saying, no, I'm up out of that. The people of this country weren't happy, Mara. I There's a mixed reaction though. A lot of people were in your corner, but a few people. Yeah, but I meet my dad and then judge. You you trust his opinion. So. What if your dad doesn't like us? He doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you gonna stop doing the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> you have met my dad, and he just met you, and oh, he goes yeah. like, "You met you met when we came back from uh, California." He's like, "Oh, here they are, the famous Johnnies." He's <laughs> like, "Right, look, we're going home." <laughs> <laughs> Probably like look at him wearing skinny jeans. <laughs> uh, lads, for the Irish music on the radio, you need to stick on Radio Kerry on a Sunday at 11 a.m. Timeless and Irish. Is that the name of the show? That's the name of the show. Oh, it's a, yeah. This could be a wake up call after a night out. The parents could come home from mass and you hear some tune being blared out in the kitchen. And not joking, it could be the Dubliners or a polka or a tame rebel song. Not quite much black and tans, but maybe a bit of grace. There's another on late night at 10pm. The uncles would even tune in from the Bronx to get the music again. 
Could be the Dubners, Jim McCann, or some Big Tom class. I think that's on every local station on a Sunday, is uh, it? Yeah, like, but they're the specialist shows, like, yeah. after... The dinner's cooking, but there's no smell of spud in the kitchen. Yeah. And you're listening to a bit of Declan Norney on the radio. Ma, what's the um the real playlist at ours? Is it 8 to 7, or what is it? On the radio, you know, they have, like, a strict... All the specialist shows are, like, after a certain time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah... On local radio, God, yeah. I it's, think it's seven, is it? Yeah, it would be, yeah, because I know on LMFM, this, I guess, it's Country Music Express is on after 7 p.m. <laughs> and Well, that's not my problem, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, at last. Claude, I was in touch um, on Snapchat as well, and she says, read the podcast, lads, the old Irish tunes. We and Minute won the Purcell Camogie Cup there lately. Well, all the way back to Minute from Mallow, we belted out the good old tunes and oh. country songs when we got back to Minute went into a pub and continued to belt out the songs sitting around the table with pints and vodka went out again the next day and done the same but got kicked out of a pub for singing one too loud uh, please note we actually weren't like we were grand <laughs> she's in college and, and that's her grammar wow uh, pub 2 told us to quieten down then ended up a night, nightclub job dance floor and all the rest it was grand but the good old tunes were better now that's really wanting a newer Ireland I think pure shite let us sing the good songs don't mind your techno shite. And if you want an accent, go on Southeast Radio and listen to Liam Spratt commentary on a match. We'll have to check that out. Liam Spratt. Bye, Liam Spratt, boy. Sounds like a fake name, doesn't it? Go on, bye. Uh, from the podcast last week about music on the radio, if you go into Monaghan and Cavan, you get Northern Sound. It plays trad music, country music, and a wee bit nowadays songs, but mostly the first two. They always have it on after mass at 11 o'clock. And this is from Monaghan, and Dara says, fuck Cavan. <laughs> <laughs> and he says if he wins the mug he doesn't want it give it to somebody who needs it more but he's a big fan ooh typical Monaghan guff there <laughs> from you Dara <laughs> thanks go on Johnny yeah oh well we have um an audio clip there yeah we, we mentioned Sean McCaffrey last week and I, you just were saying is there anybody with local accents on yeah. local radio so, so this, which station is he on so Sean McCaffrey is on Northern Sound and he's from Monaghan Town so this is him uh, he does the, he presents the breakfast role it's the morning show on Northern Sound but he also does a bit of the sports commentary so this is his commentary from the conclusion of the Ulster Minor Football uh, f Championship Final in 2013 it was Monaghan v Tyrone so uh, I'll just play it here hopefully that you can hear it okay he sounds like a fella who'd be selling cattle down the market <laughs> or something like he sounds like he's doing an auction there that's that's sean mccaffrey that's he's brilliant he's a legend he's a make more make more make more, make more, make more. <laughs> sold <laughs> That's class Fair Again fun. we got a lot of correspondence on dick pics Oh come on Anonymous said On the topic of dick pics I was in the cinema on Saturday with my girlfriend We're on the phones during the ads As you do And she opened a snap from a lad with his dick out I want to know why he sent it As she makes it very clear through her social media That she's in a relationship She asked him why And his response was I grew an inch and had a trim I had to show it off to somebody <laughs> he, was, he was blocked before the trailers could begin sort of a fucking animal is he I grew an inch and had a trim I had to show it to somebody everybody come here see how good come see my done. dick yeah <laughs> wow that's there's lads I tell you it makes me ashamed to be a man sometimes Johnny I don't know we're going to need a lot of trad music now to get past <laughs> yeah. that can we just say we're good for correspondence and dick pics yeah. yeah yeah cheers guys probably too late for the podcast just listen to last week's now spilt milk I matched this bird on Tinder and as you say things got saucy it moved to Snapchat and we started trading pictures and eventually some videos there was talks of meeting up and the girl recommended after her holidays on holidays she sent me the filthiest videos and said things that can't be said she came back and no sign of contact from her a few days later she had a new boyfriend on her story this has happened another time since great podcast Gerard and Nimrick what the hell you're not getting a mug, girl. Not with that madness. <laughs> oh, we had one lad on who was explaining why he was sending um, photos. Well. He had a woman. Oh, maybe I didn't send it to the group. He, he had one. He had her on the end of his fishing line, as you'd say. And he'd send her a dick pic and she'd come running. Oh, you, yeah, yeah. This, she yeah. must have some fucking flute in him. This is the first guy. I didn't who, believe that message. Maybe, but this is the first guy who's actually owned up to it. That's why I just said I'd say Yeah, it, he said that he sent her a picture and she'd... Like travel 100 miles for 
the jolly. Wow. He must have saw me walk on him. <laughs> An absolute weapon, I'd say. DJ AK- Carey won, I'd say. AK-47 that. job, I'd say. Who's getting the mug? Who's getting the mug? Um, It's got to be the guy choking. Mark from Wicklow. Yeah, Mark from Wicklow. Mark from Wicklow. Johnny? Yeah, go on, yeah. I think that was just a class email there. Um, I really enjoyed that. But, uh, yeah, he's getting the mug. Mark from Wicklow. Congrats, he's getting the mug. Kindly sponsored by HairyBaby.com, where you can buy loads of two Johnny's merchandise. Right, weekly roundup. Busy week, John Boy. John Boy, big week, oh, John Boy. Oh, yes, John Boy. Very big week, John Boy. A big show in Clonmel last night, John Boy. Big show, boy, yeah. Get Loose was back on the road last night. Mm, and the one and only, we reckon the one and only uh, Get Loose show in our home county. Yeah. And production was big. There was smoke machines. I don't want to oh, give yeah. it away. Like Big lights, boy. Big, big lights. Big lights. Spoiler. Um, I was surprised Some hate people from Kilkenny Yeah And Waterford and Cork Cork yeah Cork yeah See yeah, I suppose yeah, 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 Kil- yeah, Kil- yeah. Kil- <laughs> Kilkenny and Cork are what's all out Yeah So They snuck into Clamel They snuck into Clamel right And Clamel was full last night It was sold out as well It's brilliant I, I've seen a Mint Me Butcher um, This morning He's from out Aherlow way At the butter The Galtys there And he said He was sitting down the back With his shoes off And There was an old man in front of him And he recognised him and the old man turned around to him, and the old man is living in, is it Glen Koshaminga? Up to Galtys now, there's a Mount Kosh there, there's a mountain. And this man is living way up there, he's a farmer of 72, and he drove down on his own to come see us. Jeez. And Brendan said, what has you here? I love the boys. I love the two boys, I had to come down. That's last, isn't and it? And then Brendan said he met him at half time, and your man was saying... Jason, delighted I came now. Back in Brandy, delighted I came down to Clamel now. People are coming down from the mountains to Yeah, we're bringing them down by the mountain men. But that was the Clamel show. That was great. And we've got a live podcast coming up. And you'll probably be listening to this on a Monday. It's 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 happening. Uh, Monday the 4th in Trinity. Yeah, it's it's sold out. It's gone. It's gone like that. Yeah, it's it's um in association with Huawei. So um the tickets were free. You had to apply for them during the week, but they're all gone now. Yeah, you had to be a student. So, we're looking forward to chatting with students, and we have a special guest that you'll be hearing on next week's podcast. Yeah. And uh, where are we in? We're in Mayo. We're in Mayo next week, yeah. The Friday 8th. Eight. We're in the Royal Theatre and Events Centre in Castle Bar, and you can get tickets on Ticketmaster and 2 Ie. I think, yeah, Lamin season is affecting ticket sales in Mayo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Small you know, time, yeah. Small time. A little bit, yeah. But ever like, it's grass, which is great now. It's about... I think it's 30 or 40 left for Vicar Street. Yeah. Buzzing for that. So get them. We'll sell that out. We're going to break up the place then. Absolutely smash it up. Johnny, you signed an odd autograph last night in Clonmel. Oh, there was, there's a second function room in the hotel. So there was a wedding on in there. Mm. And pe- and some of them were out going out to the smoking area and then seen us and started coming in for photos. Now, we do meet and greet with everybody after every show. and um, Not everybody. Well, whoever wants to. Yeah. <laughs> and this woman came out and she's like, I was at, the, I was at the wedding next door. And she talked about the bride. And I was like, get him. Yeah. Get the bride and groom. Yeah. So to came and this lad came out, he was at the wedding. And he's like, I fucking love you, I didn't know your show was on. Signed the back of his shirt at the wedding. <laughs> big white shirt, like. Proper white shirt. A big, like, the whole way across his back, it's big Johnny B. And he just kept looking around going, don't write dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> don't write dickhead on me back now. Just write Johnny B. It was brilliant because, like, you, you were like, get the bride and groom down, we get a photo. And then, like, they brought out, like, the bride. who they said was the bride. I you know, know she'd write. She, she didn't have a white dress on. It was kind of white. And it was brilliant because, like, your mom was like, this is the bride. And Johnny B just got, that's not a fucking bride. <laughs> <laughs> dress was beige. They came down and sat in our laps then. I was kind of like, I don't know if I was a fucking comedian or Peter Stringfellow. It's the weirdest thing ever. Like. Who the bride sitting on your lap? Yeah. Getting photo. Yeah. The fucking bridesmaid took enough selfies, lad. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> there was like loads of people queuing up for the photos and this one was like, another one. I was like, yeah, Lily, fuck off. It's like know. DJ Khaled, lad. Another one. <laughs> another one. So that was our week and we've got a... Uh, uh, we had a day off and I climbed Galty Moor. Yeah, how did that go? Class. It's the highest mountain in Tipperary. The day off I lay on my, my arse. <laughs> <laughs> my day off. It's tall enough. It's about a thousand feet or just under it. So it's, it's tall enough. Yeah. And if anybody's watching this, this, um, you know, visually, and you're wondering why I'm in shorts, a match after this. All right. It's not. It's, I haven't dressed up as a GA player for this podcast. Around. <laughs> Halloween episode. Yeah. <laughs> just, just recommend it, lads. Uh, but if you are going mountain climbing, Galtie Moore's gas, right? It's grand. If you go from the Mitchestown side to Black Road, you, there's a clear path for like the first four kilometers. You can't go wrong. And then the path stops and you break off Galtie Moor, Galtie Bog, and there's a stake. And you can see where you want to go to. Mm. And it doesn't look that far. But the amount of people who get lost. Because the fog came down. The fog yeah. came down on us. And I was with a lad, Tommy. 
<laughs> Tom Nocton, why, yeah. Tom Nocton, he just messaged me the night before on Instagram. Johnny, I'm going up Galtimore Moore in the morning. Do you want to come? Tom, I'm your man. <laughs> I've seen his photo on Instagram. And like, I know Tom Nocton because he works in the local furniture shop. And yeah. I, bought, I bought a bed off. <laughs> I just messaged Johnny. He's like, the fuck are you doing up a mountain with Tom Knox? <laughs> yeah, sure, that's Tom from the furniture shop. Yeah, yeah so I took him up the mountain. But you'd want an old app, you know, them apps on your phone on the watch or something. Because mm. if you are going doing Guilty Moore thing and oh, it's grand. Now, we were up and down about two and a half hours. It's grand. Yeah. But don't get, don't fucking die on my account. Are you going to buy one of those fancy apps on your watch? He sent me a free one. Yeah, I knew well, but he won't even buy hiking boots. He's been hiking like a year and a half, and he's going up the fucking mountain. <laughs> I was up the top of Galaxy Moore in a pair of Nike runners. Tom Knoxon was up. He had this jacket and a backpack and a big pair of spiky shoes the whole lot. That was in a pair of sandbags up Galaxy Moore. <laughs> Honest to God, we'll move on from there. I just think that's excellent. <laughs> Topic number one, right? The Johnny Awards. It's it's award season. You know, Oscars, fucking Grammys, Brits, the whole lot. Golden Globes. Yeah, don't matter. Here at Two Johnny's Podcast, we're giving out the Johnny's Awards, and we've got lots of different categories. We'll debate it out, and we'll give you our definitive winners. Bear in mind, this is from 2018, so, that, you know, the year that was 2018. Mm. You know, no one's done fuck all in 2019 yet, so. The Johnny's Awards, Johnny B, kick it off there, first award. TV show. Yes, the best TV show. Um, you don't have to say the late, late on my account, you know. Just oh, we weren't <laughs> fucking planning <laughs> it, Maureen. <laughs> <laughs> just, just scratch that out there. So. Um... Honestly, I thought the game, three-part yes. three documentary about hurling that was an RT, and, you know, I'm not telling you your business now, but, like, <laughs> I think that's where RT are, like, leaders. They're the best in the world, I think, at that. Nobody else in the world could have made that documentary. Mm. They have no competition, I think, in, in that angle. Like, it was fucking class. There was such an archive of stuff. There was footage from, like, you know, before the foundation of the state, like as soon as lads had cameras, RT have it. Mm. Yeah. With the first games and anecdotes and then real arty stuff, lads poking a ball against the wall in like 4K. It's a bit too much of that maybe. But <laughs> I know the director, I know the director Jerry listens to the podcast, so I'm not going to cut the back off him. That was a savage show and I think that's something that will go down in history. Lads will still be watching that in 20 years time. Yeah. Like those hands documentaries. Iconic kind of job, wasn't it? Yeah, so that's getting the vote for me. Um, I would have given it to the Defiant Ones. But that actually came out at the end of 2017. Yeah. Okay. But you know that documentary about... Yeah. um, yeah, Dr. Jimmy Iovine and Dr. Dre. Dr. Yeah. Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre, yeah. Dr. Dre, right? Um, I went for Daniel and Magella's uh, B&B Road Trip. <laughs> <laughs> Stop, man. I'm fucking joking. I'm joking. But in all fairness, I don't want... It is a good show, but... I in fairness to Daniel, like isn't he like... He's got a second series now, and it's Daniel and Magella's American B&B Road Trip. He's fucking raking it in. He knows what he's at. Hey, oh. lad, he has to pay for Dermot Bannon. <laughs> <laughs> Get an extension to the house. 100% no. What I've went for in the best TV show category is Derry Girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Johnny still hasn't watched it. What? I'm putting aside maybe Tuesday evening now. I think I'm off. Yeah, because the new series is back. Tuesday I know, yeah, night. but where can I watch it? Sure, I have it recorded. It's oh, have in you? the yeah. Channel 4 play, uh, channel, channel for All Player. All so. 4, yeah. yeah can I, can I get that in, Ar in Ireland? Yes. Okay, grand. Yeah, or if not, you can, you can just watch it on my Skybox. Yeah. I'll give what you the box. Because what I've started watching is the, the new RT player is actually really good. Thank the you. The old one was fucking dirt. The new RT player is class, and you can Chromecast the TV. So I'm watching a documentary about the revolution that Killian Murphy oh, yeah, narrates. It's, very good. it's actually really good. That's, that's, I'd recommend that. Anyway, um, sorry, go on, Johnny. Yeah. So who are we going to go for as a winner then? I'm going to go with, I'm going to back you, I said Derry Girls. Yes. Yeah, I knew I'd be out here. The okay. Johnny Award goes to Derry Girls. Yeah. All oh. right. Next category, best hangover TV <laughs> or binge watch. I tell you that now, there was, there was a good bit of competition for this one because this is, this is a niche market. This is your Sunday kind of, I feel horrendous about myself. Going to watch seven episodes in a row. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to just absolutely binge watch. Johnny, what have you went for? Uh... Do I have to give you like my out and out one choice? Or can I give you, you my can, top three? You can give us a top three there. We'll debate it. Okay, my top three were Last Chance You. Right? Oh, great minds think alike, bite. That is, you know, the football lads in America getting their last chance at a scholarship because they keep fucking things up. Then Sunderland Till I Die. Yes. A year in the life of a Sunderland fan as they get relegated. Really good watching. I, I wouldn't be a mad soccer fan. Great insight for me into soccer fans. And my third one... You won't like it, but it's Vietnam War documentary by <laughs> Ken Burns. Over. That is class. Uh, there's, there's 10 episodes. and What's it on? Netflix. Netflix. Yeah. 
this is for when you're like hungover and emotional yeah. and needy and you I don't know yeah. Um, well, I, I, I don't, haven't been drinking a lot lately, so okay. this is my binge watch kind of. Okay. Oh, okay. okay, right. Yeah, okay. Okay. There's, there's just, if you're into your history, lads, it's just some eye opener into how crazy the American decision making was. They just went to war over nothing. Like. Um, I've also went for um, Last Chance You. I think it's perfect hangover wise. You know, you're just looking at like, it, well, it makes me feel good about myself to a certain degree because the lads on it are in college. And they are stupid. <laughs> so like, ah, more they're fucking. Ticked. Oh, they're fair ticking. Ah, more. come on. Yeah, I've never, I've never seen that. They're doing yeah. exams in college, ticking boxes. Oh yeah, I know. What? But that's the American education system. Ah, there's fellas there now with nothing but sods of turf inside their head. One like him barely. He's too lazy. He won't even open his mouth to talk. He's talking with his teeth closed. He's like, post, like, post Malone. Yeah, like some sort of kind of rapper. You know, it's it's crazy. This but, is the guys, this is the homework. Uh, I just like to play football. He comes into college and all you need is a pencil. That's the and he's lad, like, I don't have a yeah, pencil. Yeah, that's the lad who wears the blue jumper all the time. Yeah. 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 Bobby Bruce. <laughs> yeah. uh, one thing you have to bring to college. A fucking pencil. Oh, I ain't got a pencil. I don't have a pencil. I, oh, I mom, you. I'm eight the pencil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking. I just think it makes me feel good about myself. And then the coach is real mot- motivator, like Mr. Motivator. And he's like, you know, so if I'm on the couch, like dying, covered in donor meat. And he's just like, we got to do it. I'm like, yeah, he's right. I'm going to fucking put this kebab in the bin now and go for a run. I don't. You know, I probably want the ice cream then. But I mean, I just think it is a good binge watch. And it, it has that thing that you can watch seven, yeah. eight, nine episodes in a day. And if you tune out for a sec on your phone or something, you'll be okay. That's it. It's kind of one of them ones you'll watch and you can still scroll through Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> so it's perfect for that. I think we have a winner there. Uh, yeah, more. Any... Uh, last Chance You is the one that I would... Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so if you're hungover, lads, check it out. Do you have to be in sports to enjoy it? Not particularly. No, I don't like American football at all. But it's this is it isn't about American football. It's about people, and it's about very disadvantaged people and yeah. trying to turn their lives around. And yeah. the main guy in it, the coach, is a very interesting person. Yeah, he's yeah. just he's Jason a white Brown. guy, a white guy from Compton. Yeah. yeah. Where's it said? It's the middle of nowhere. Oh, deep south, Indy, Indy, Indiana. No, it's it's like. Independence in, in Independence College in is it like oh, Mississippi? Like okay, Mara's gonna check that. Yeah. Anyway, so Google, Google let Maureen. Last chance you. Last chance you there. wins the Johnny for best Hangover TV slash binge watch music. What artist or band had the best year in 2018? Yeah, the Johnny Award for music. Uh, Mickey Joe Hart. Yeah, <laughs> I like to think we dug him up, boy. Brought him out of the wilderness in the Sugar Club, and he's. He's on the Late Late Show now and everything, but... Yeah, he's fucking everywhere. He's on the 6 o'clock show the other day. Yeah. Yeah. He's on the ski trip in Today FM. Well. Yeah. We should be getting 10%. Um, Mickey Joe... I know I'm only messed. I went for George Ezra. Just wanted to say, actually, I was listening to Mickey Joe's new single uh, this morning. It's brilliant. Stressed Out. Yeah. That's cool, I heard yeah. that, yeah. It's a mad version of it. He's got a covers album. Yeah. And who are you giving it to? George Ezra. Mad lad. Some 2018. Johnny, the thing is, people say, oh... Such and such is great, or they're great, or this this guy's great, and you can't name their songs. You can't. You go. You know the one you would have heard on the radio, and you're trying to sing it. George Ezra, Shotgun, Paradise, Hold My Girl, and that was from his second album, Twenty Four. Yeah. So you know they always say the difficult second album. Mm. He went away and absolutely nailed it. We're having that difficult first album. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, but just because he's massive, mm. like Shotgun is super catchy. Yes, but like. Just because something is big doesn't make it the best. Well, I like it. Yeah. And you you did you were going on about Paradise before everyone else was now. Yeah, Paradise. there you go. And thousands of others like it as well. I want to say fair player George Ezra because like when he put out... Um, Budapest. Budapest. Mm. He was fucking starting to look like a bit of one who wandered there for a while. Yeah. Mm. Do you know, he was gone off the boil mm. and he came back. So... Big second album. Yeah, I tipped the cap to him. But for me now... Um, the man who had a breakthrough year, 2018, probably Dermot Kennedy. Yeah. Mm. Serious year. And you, you're hearing about two of his songs on the radio. I'd say Power yeah. Over Me and then his new one. But if you throw him on the old Spotify now or the Apple Music, whatever you listen to. And um, just he loves shouting, though. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he's, fair, he's fair like... Um, he's fair intense. Yes. Yeah. Like, Everything's intense with him. I wonder if you went on a date with him. Be like, fuck it. Oh! Do you want the garlic mushrooms? Do you know he's uh, Mary Kennedy's nephew? 
Oh, nationwide. Yeah. That's where he gets the fucking talent from now. Yeah, yeah. Because she, I, I had uh, chatting to Mary Kennedy, and she said that uh, she remembers that there were he was in a talent competition in a pub, and they all it was like a clapometer, and sure he had to invite all the friends and relations, and she to be in there, and they're like going like, Whoa! and she's like, and now he's made it. Like, Did her oh. votes count double because she was Mary Kennedy? Her <laughs> clap was like extra loud. Yeah, I like you. Mary Kennedy in your corner you're going to win that's like gas I didn't know that at all wait till Noel hears that yeah <laughs> <laughs> so Dermot Kennedy or George Ezra well um, in fairness to them they didn't release a whole pile of music in 2018 picture this did five nights at the Tree Arena yeah that is some going yeah that's meant yeah. like that that brings them up to what's that 14,000 people to go mm. that's like 200,000 people they <laughs> they don't um, the RDS they're drawing crowds, like that's nearly as big as you two for crowds, like yeah, doing big crowds. They're doing big crowds. Yeah, picture this. I think mm, no, shows. I don't know. They're starting to sound right, like the nineteen seventy five though. The new album is all the like new bada 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 bada. wanna yeah. be loved, doodle. Interesting. Yeah, I do like it, though. but um, right, Seagrid. <laughs> Seagrid, <laughs> right? Right. We well, like you, Seagrid. But when are you gonna release the album? Do you know she still hasn't got an album. Yeah, to me, I like her, like. Uh, do the hips, do the hips. She does the kind of hip thing as well. Like that, that <laughs> I know. Yeah. She does when his secret is dancing. Don't do that in shorts, lad. For uh, sorry, Maureen. <laughs> See a bit more than you bargained for there. It's um, but to me, she only has two songs. What? And that hip thing now, I, I've started doing it. And I don't like it, but I can't. <laughs> yeah, I was watching footage of our last. I music. can't stop. Like we, yeah, look back at footage Stray. from the music thing, and I'm just singing like, and I'm swaying my hips, and it's just so wrong. Because the crowd are at eye level. <laughs> Very sorry to anybody who's in the front six rows at that gig. No, I like high five too. Yeah. But she's she's going to explore, I think. <laughs> um, Just a quick mention for Freaky Friday. It's probably the song of 2018, I would say. Some crack. Mm. Yeah. Too much fucking, too much serious music on the radio. All them American rappers mumbling and everything sounds the same. But a Freaky Friday now was a bit of crack. Yeah. Little Dicky and Chris Brown. Little Dicky, lad. Right, who does the Johnny go to? Maura, who are you voting for? Oh, you didn't mention the one that I'd give it to above everybody else. Cardi B, I love her. <laughs> Fucking Cardi B. Huh? Yeah, but then I think Dermot Kennedy. Like, we go Irish. Okay, we yeah. go Irish. Dermot hey, Kennedy, yeah. the Johnny for Best Music oh, Artist. Oh, and uh, just to say, it is uh, Independence College, uh, Independence Community College in Kansas, where the last Kansas. chance you, the Kansas. season three of the yeah. last chance you. Kansas. Um, funniest Bastard. Funniest bastard, lad. You oh. can't give it to yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Um, I was thinking long and hard about this, and I came up with two names. First one, obviously, Ricky Gervais. His Humanity special on Netflix came out. Okay. I thought that was class. Not for me now, but you love him. And Kevin Hart, who uh, who obviously has been playing Chris Tucker for the last 10 years. <laughs> 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 he fucking is Chris Tucker. What? Yeah, he, he's the exact same as Chris Tucker. Some year for him. He played a stadium, a comedy gig, stand-up comedy gig, mm. to 100,000 people. Mm. That's insanity. Bad. That's mental. 100,000 people. Wow. Imagine how much he made out of that. Wow. He's the high, is he like the highest, one of the highest grossing comedians in the world? He probably would be uh, himself and rocker, like, yeah. in, amongst the highest paid entertainers. He's gross and incredible mental amount of money, like. Mm. And to be doing that, he's breaking new ground for comedians. That's why I think he's a funny bastard. He's not doing Castle Bar next Friday. No, <laughs> he's, not, he's not dealing with them, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? He's, he's not like, I ain't got no big crowds in my gigs because lemon season's in, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, motherfuckers in Kevin season. Bitches, cows coming in everywhere. I can't go to your show, Kevin. Fucking watching these cows on my camera at night. Oh, my God. <laughs> You know what I mean? Kevin Hart doesn't have to put up with that, like. Yeah, that's true. Oh, Ricky Gervais, like, he's going to gigs in London. Yeah. London City. London Town. London Town. Oh, sorry, you can't go to my gig. You got, you know, you got to look after little, look after little animals. <laughs> he doesn't even eat meat. No, he doesn't. He's, he's the opposite of us, lad. Yeah, I don't know if he doesn't eat meat, but he didn't like he, people killing, like, tigers and shit. Bit, oh, well. He doesn't like trophy hunting. Yes, that's the word I was looking yeah. for. Not killing tigers and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Big words. Um, okay. I've I've gone where I consume most of my comedy is actually on social media. Yes, that's true as well. And I think a lot of people if they want to own up to it would probably be the same. Yeah. I've gone for my favourite Instagrammer. Shooter Williams. Oh yeah. The loosest Aussie. He's an Australian lad that you may or may not be following. And he puts up videos every day 
and they're always a laugh. Mm. And I looked at some of my favorite favorite Irish comedians like Dylan Morn, right? I love him, mm. but like he puts he puts up very little stuff. Yeah. Mm. And I'm going to go see him next time. He's back on tour now again. I'm mm. going to go see him. Actually, if you listen, come on the podcast. Fuck, we have to crack. <laughs> but um, he's hardly listening, is he? Hey, yeah, might be. You wouldn't know. You, you wouldn't know if listening. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Because yeah, that's that's listening all over, lad. Yeah. This fella's listening all over. <laughs> um. So he's he's very over 18s is our shooter, but he had a like funny memes during the week, or he's like beer garden. He was out like farming cans out of the ground and stuff. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? It's clever, like. Your kind of humour, right? Yeah, my kind of stuff. There you go. Kind of so, who's the Johnny going to? You, you can't look past Kevin Hart. I haven't looked at Kevin Hart. I kind of, I kind of feel we should give it to Kevin Hart because I thought he got very hard done by in terms of yeah. not being allowed to present the Oscars because of something that he said years and years ago. What did he say? He basically uh, he made comments that were inferred to be homophobic, and when you kind of looked into them. I don't know. I don't think any of my gay friends would have had a problem with them, but it was, you know, it's it's California, very PC cultural sensitivity and all that, and it's the Jeez. Oscars. And I feel like we're 50, 55 episodes in. There's no way we're hosting Anthony. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but Ever. basically, he would. He was like, he was like told, like, you have to apologize for me. He's like, look, I've apologized for them in the past. And I'm, I'm not going to be. Grand. He and he's like, I really respect him for saying I'm not going to be uh, just bowed to the bow to the pressure. Yeah. Yeah. So hundred percent. Kevin Hart, the Johnny for the funniest bastard by Johnny B's not happy though. I haven't seen enough of his stuff lad. I'm gonna have to look him up. I'm gonna have to look him up, man. He's good. Next okay. category. Person you'd most like to avoid at a house party. Yeah, simple one for me. Um Kevin Hart. No, <laughs> <laughs> no. Nah, nah. Go on, Johnny. Tony McGregor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fucking imagine getting stuck with him by talking about coinage and just being you know the documentary that RT did on McGregor a few years ago? Yes. Like yeah. say it just McGregor was like getting big at this yes. stage. He was kinda kinda just after busting on the scene. And they're having a garden party mm. in their house. There's the first problem. <laughs> <laughs> Irish people like garden party. Like that's called a barbecue. Come on. <laughs> but they're all gathered around and Tony calls everyone in. It's like just like to say a few words. And he says I'm talking to Gaden Gillen there. Go on. But he was like <laughs> telling this great story about how Connor said and he said, Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, the McGregors hold all the aces and he pulled four aces out of the inside suit jacket pocket i kid you not look that up on the mcgregor documentary fucking cringe imagine meeting that at a house party and the whole coinage thing as well no not mcgregor not feeling that, that. that's perfectly valid <clears throat> yes we hold all the aces. um boris johnson <laughs> oh. Yeah, he's. Well, I just about China. You know, like. Just, <laughs> ah. We taunted him for ages, lad. Without actually saying anything. He'd be just blubbering. blubbering Man, I'd like to put him in a blender. Yeah. And any country singer. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I miss. Jimmy Buckley's a lovely human being. Yeah, I know what. Jimmy, boy. Maura, you got anyone you'll add to this? Uh. <laughs> I was thinking I, I can't comment on this one in case they end up being a guest in the late late at some stage. So. Go on, Mara, comment there. <laughs> <laughs> I would also say I like me re- reality TV, but I would also say anybody from Made in Chelsea. Okay. Just I watched a little bit of that the other night by you. Just came across it. I was bored, and it is some shit. And I like reality television, but that mm-hmm. that takes the piss. And yeah, and you were giving out to me for watching the Vietnam documentary. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'd rather meet the lads in Vietnam than Made in Chelsea boys. That is true. That Viet is Kong would be more cracked now than Made in fucking Hanoi. So who do we go for then? Who does Johnny go for avoiding that house party? The chances of us meeting Boris Johnson are a lot slimmer. Yeah. And I think you don't really want to avoid Boris because you just love to slap him, I think. Whereas Tony McGregor, you would generally, you just wouldn't want to be near. I don't know. I feel like, you know, two Johnnies not allowed to host the awards because they poked the shit out of <laughs> Boris Johnson at a gaff party one night, you know? Yeah. That's hey, that's good publicity, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're doing everyone a favour. We go for All Boris. right, Boris, if you're listening. <laughs> Boris, boy, step out. Step out. Right, belts. belts. Belts, Boris. Okay, so Boris Johnson is the person we'd like to yeah. avoid. No, yeah, sorry. but if we say Tony McGregor, odds are we'll fucking bang into him at one stage. And right? we'll avoid him. What, okay. if he, what if he gets Connor after us, kicks the shit out of us then? <laughs> then, then, like, do you know what I mean? We'll see him. <laughs> 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 we'll tell them Rammies yeah, yeah, right. You're from Ross Gray lad. I reckon you handle them That's true lad I just throw the Ross Gray elbow <laughs> Ross Gray elbow <laughs> Fucking Look at the bruise in my arm And everything boy. Well, Fucking hurt boy. 
pure hard as nails. <laughs> Actually, Connor, if you're listening, you want to just kick Connor, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to go for Tony McGregor, so for the person you divided at house party. The next Johnny, male heartthrob, the I'd nearly turn gay for him award. I have to say, male heartthrob, Bradley Cooper, lad, star is born. He's so fragile in it, I kind of like it. <laughs> I can't believe you didn't say Matthew O'Hanlon, the Wexford captain. Yeah, I was like, Matthew <coughs> O'Hanlon, definitely. Yeah, but Matt's a mate, like, and I don't want to make things weird between us. <laughs> You're <laughs> already weird. <laughs> uh, I've been trying to pimp him out there. <laughs> He's, yeah, Matt. If you're listening, buddy. All right. Bradley Cooper. Yeah, Bradley Cooper, lad. You made a really good point about Bradley Cooper, though, in that film, is that like he plays an alcoholic, but somehow manages to maintain a six-pack. Yeah, but oh. there, there, there's fellas, there's fellas training hard to run a six packs. Mm. Yeah, but the thing, if you're an alcoholic, you don't eat that much. Yeah, but he wasn't like yeah, but he was drinking a lot of he, he was drinking a lot of spirits, lad. He like he, he wasn't out drinking Guinness like beer belly job like Smittix. Still, there's no footage of him doing sit ups, lad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but he was he's riding Lady Gaga nonstop, lad. I know that that entire out, but like. In the film, no, no I'm not was, saying that really. He was in good nick. Too and good a nick. Too good a nick to be. I know how much, how much of a method actor do you, do you want to be, but I think they could have just done the shot with his shirt like half opened. Mm. Yeah, they like said a mate in the rest of us. Yeah, <laughs> excuse my language, excuse my French. <laughs> you used to say words. Yeah, yeah, sorry, we're gonna edit that out. No. Nah. Yeah. Uh, you're going for Bradley Cooper, saw? Um, yeah, or Keanu from EastEnders. I don't know who that is. <laughs> G- is. He's like, oh, I can't think of his real name now. But Keanu from EastEnders, people listening will know. He's like this new lad in EastEnders. And he's young lad. He's around 20, 21. But he's a shaved head. Oh. And there's not too many lads now can pull off the shaved head. Yeah. But just Keanu can. Lad. You know, mechanic there, he'd fix your car the whole off you. But he'd be. Well, has he got the, has he got the London accent? A little bit, but like. Do me a favor. Yeah, he can get a bit angry at times and he's got a bit of stubble and he, he's got the shaved head. That's the lad there, is it? That's Keanu now Look at that What's his name Mara? Uh, Taylor Keanu Taylor Keanu Is his name Taylor. in in, in, um, in EastEnders That's a good looking lad He's doing the squinty smoky I think Ah uh, yeah But sure, that's what all the pros do by. Right I'm, I've gone for Ryan Reynolds Good call Your man from Deadpool Yeah Good now, call Previously you know When La La Land came out I was giving it to Ryan Gosling Just yeah. cause uh, he'd, he'd, He's my You know If I had to take Some lad's pipe I'd probably <laughs> Ryan Gosling's a handsome man. He does that bit where he looks at the camera in the end of La Land. Um, Ryan Reynolds has started his own company and he's doing his own ads mm. on Instagram and they're brilliant. Yeah. So uh, he's getting my nod and he's, he's an all around funny guy. Have you yeah. seen the one that uh, him and Hugh Jackman did? Yeah, yeah that's great. Oh, yeah. great. Yeah. Johnny, I'd have to agree with you there on Ryan Reynolds in fairness. Good shot. Some jawline. Ah, yeah. yeah. So the Johnny's award for the best male heart drop is Ryan Reynolds. And I like it that the biggest movies he's doing, um, Deadpool and all, he looks totally fucked up. His face is all scarred and shit. Mm. He's not playing off his um, gorgeous card anymore. Now over to ladies. Best bit of biscuit, as Noel would say. <laughs> the best biscuit award. Female. Um, I went for... Um, Obviously you went for... Anne-Marie. Oh, the singer Anne-Marie. Yeah. Oh, she's got those eyes, but she's like a fucking Siberian husky. Just <laughs> look in her eyes, blow your mind. Lovely Plus she blue won, eyes. She sings the Paul Kelly song. Two tails in and two. Yeah. 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 Anne Marie, yeah. I've went for Anne Marie or Miley Cyrus. Just have a thing for her since since like I was a young lad and she was Hannah Montana. It sounds weird, but like I was young as well, so that's not weird. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I've kinda yeah. And You've then, seen her own like seen yeah, kinda feel like a knower. And she kinda looks Really sexy, but kind of normal as well. You know, not like... Mm. Like, you could bump into someone on a night out there that could look like Miley Cyrus. Like. I haven't... I've yet to see them. But. No, she's not in Reigns, lad. <laughs> um, I can't believe it just didn't go with Una Hitty. I'm fucking sick of it, like. And she, uh, You know what I mean? We've called her out enough times. Yeah. No reply. No good. You know? So. She's liking our photos and Instagram and stuff. Fucking teasing us, boy. Yeah. She did that photo of her in in the, t- in the tip jersey there a couple of years ago. Remember? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder, like, why? I say she's only taking that to have the crack with her friends. Yeah. And it's everywhere, like it's on the bathroom door of like a thousand lads' houses now. Yeah. Known to Barry. So who are you going for, John? You going for Luna? Um, another Irish lady now that totally deserves a nod is uh, she's still going strong. Rosanna Davidson. 
She's very beautiful. Yeah, a beautiful woman. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. Mara? Oh, best looking woman. Jesus. Yeah. I didn't think I'd be expected to contribute. Well, to we're talking about fellas, so. What about out, out of the four we've mentioned? Anyone? Uh, Anne Marie, no. Miley Cyrus, I do like, but personality. But uh, yeah, I can't. I don't know. I, She's not that way inclined. Yeah, well, who do I, I, I? I don't know that. What, Miley Cyrus? She, she's a good singer and all, like. Do you know what I mean? I, I like you her see, father. I like the talent as well. Yeah. If they have a bit of talent going from now, it, it sways it in my. Oh, that's Rosanna Davis and fuck, so. No? <laughs> oh, Johnny! And she's a vegan as well. Joke. Like, who's, who's a vegan? Rosanna Davis. Oh, sorry. That's just crossing her out there. Crossed and out. Yeah. And Marie, lad. Does she had the meat? She does. Does she had the meat? By Jesus, I hope she does. <laughs> Um, I can't. I can't say I'm Marie because I can't even remember what she looks like. Okay, blonde, Lovely. she's a pop singer. Yeah, I'd have to say Una Healy does look and good Nick though for you know. <sighs> right, we're going with Una. So Una, if you're listening, again for the hundredth time, you want to come down and collect your award here yeah, per- <laughs> personally, or oh. answer my messages on Instagram, whatever you like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a bit more down our alley now. The Johnny Award for the best GA <clears throat> pundit. <clears throat> right, you see, it's hard because. My favourite GA pundit is Don Log, But he wasn't on screen in 2018. Don Logue he ba- is like, yeah. He's back now. Mm. So this was kind of a hard one for me, in fairness. But I went for Anthony Daly. Really? Anthony Daly, lad. Like, he should just have a job, like, telling people bad news in hospitals. Because <laughs> he does everything with a kind of smile, you know. And everything's kind of all right. And he say, yeah, you know yourself. That's the way it is. Kind of smiley. Always smiley. Lovely. You Great hurling. Yeah. Ball across the field. Bang. Came back then. You know, things are going well for Leash. <laughs> <laughs> Big smiley head Even bad. Imagine him in hospital Being your doctor Yeah do you know Right Yeah you have Okay right You do have cancer Right do you know But yeah. like do you know It's not too bad you know, at, the, <laughs> at the end of the day I think Do you know You know yourself yeah. You know this You know this You've been in tougher scrapes Do you know <laughs> <laughs> I think Dalo for me yeah No I'm not going to Dalo Okay I never liked Dalo Since The 1997 No The year Galway bet tip In the All-Ireland semi-final Where Shamie Callan scored 4-4 Okay Shamey's after roasting. The Shamey scored three fours, sorry. He's after roasting the full back. Shamey wins another ball. He's about to score his fourth goal, become the highest ever scorer in an All Ireland semi final. And he gets spear tackled. And there's no other way of describing it. Your man catches him and drives him head first down into the ground. Remember that. And yeah. he gets penalty. And Dalo says after the game, you know, Shamey got a bit of a knock. <laughs> and things have happened on the field where, like, like Joe Broly went on the rant. Yeah. About about um Sean Cavanagh. Sean Cavanagh. Yeah, yeah. And a new rule was brought in. Yeah, Blackard. Okay. And Dale and the boys saw that tackle, which to me now, that's the worst thing I've ever seen happen in Croke Park. Jeez, yeah. I mean in club games videos will go around the lad's been decapitated now, <laughs> Gary fellas stabbing fellas in the heart. But I mean in Croke Park, that's the worst thing I've ever seen. Yeah. And the commentary team afterwards said, Got a bit of a knock. Got a bit of a knock. So for me Who are you gonna go for? Is John Milan a pundit? He is, yeah. He's co-commentator. Yeah, I would. Uh, I don't think he's a pundit per se. He's a. Yeah. He does a bit of punditry as well. Okay. His co. He does the Marty Squad and stuff. I guess that's punditry. I, I well, I, I was thinking of Sunday game punditry. Okay. So. Oh, he's not on the telly. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I'll like, sneak him in. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I just think he he's brought a lot of freshness to it and a lot of sincerity. I think he's yeah. real genuine. I'd love to see him on Sunday game. So. Yeah. yeah. I'd love to see him in a suit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be on the Sunday game in a t-shirt. <laughs> An old polo, boy. Go on, boy. Oh, this is unbelievable stuff, Marty, yeah. boy. <laughs> yeah, Milan. Good call. Uh, yeah. On, on TV, uh, Cummins might be my man. Yeah, Brendan Slash. Yeah, Who are we going to go for? Mara, what do you think? Uh... God, he's all gone for hurling commentators and oh, I was yeah. going for football commentators and... Yeah. The boys who do the basketball are class as well now. Mm. Oh, fuck it. Your man who does the rugby is unreal on the radio. Yeah, we're talking about GA pundits here. Are we? Sorry, yeah. yeah. Mm. I just love him though as well. Yeah. I'd always have to go with Colin Moore because he's from... Ah, oh, Jesus. That's the most biased thing you've ever said. I, I don't care. Colin Moore. Colin Moore is a hero. 
oh, to meet people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he actually, but you know what? He's the one pundit that you can guarantee that will be speaking sense. So you have Spillane who's going rabbit and on about intensity and just says the same thing that he says about every match. And then Brawley is on some human rights initiative going mad. And then you actually have Colm breaking down the play. And also he's very adamant about Dublin being broke up into two separate counties, which they should be. So. Oh, you fucking meet people. Man. <laughs> Christ almighty. GA pundit, John, who are we going to go for? I can't give it to Dale or that. He's too many cliches. Okay. Milan? Himself and Cyril Farrell fall into the, <laughs> do you know, wristy hurlers, big men, quick feet, bang, over the bar. Do you know? Yeah. We go for Milan? Yeah, Milan. John Milan. John Milan. <laughs> right. Oh, what about your look now, lad? Oh. Your look now, right? You know, I mean, Johnny Smacks, absolutely gutless. <laughs> <laughs> I do enjoy your, um, and I really enjoy Shane McGrand radio too, yeah. but... I'm going to give it to John Milan. We we'll give it to John Milan. Johnny goes to John Milan. Bye, Milan. Bye. Okay, we're going to kick through these now pretty quick. We're caught for time. Sporting moment of the year. The Johnny Award for the greatest sporting moment. For me, this is pretty easy. Limerick win the All Ireland. Yeah, I don't know if this is actually an award category. Yeah? Yeah, like who do you give the award to? The moment. Yeah, we'll, the Limerick <laughs> we'll team. Ring up the moment there and give it to we'll them. Ring Dowling there or something. Get somebody up there to collect right, this award. We'll get Dowling down to collect that so grand. The hardest bastard award, Johnny. Uh, the nurses. <laughs> <laughs> they went protesting in January. Yeah, but it's 2019. Like, I can give a fuck. <laughs> the nurses went protesting in winter. Yeah, like, they are they, hard. They, they, the farmers are tough, but they do it like when they're not too busy at work. Yeah, yeah. In, in between true. like silage and Kevin, there's a gap there where the farmers protest. They drive around Stephen's Greens. And they, they go up out, light bonfires outside the meat factory. The nurses were pounding the pavements. And and lads were bipping the horn at them and all. Go on the nurses, like, but freezing. I was going to go for Danny Dyer in East Enders. He's kicking the shit out of lads, like, hypothetically. But that's in fake. all fairness, I can't disagree with you on the nurses. Yeah, yeah. that's... Hardest that's bastard of war. Go on the nurses, <laughs> boy. Who, who's the woman you Hardest want? Bastardettes, I suppose you call them. <laughs> who's your one now who's doing, like, the head negotiator for the, the, the INMR? What's her name? Oh, again? um... But anyway, like, they decided, they called a strike mm. in winter. Mm-hmm. That's, oh, a, that's women, hardcore. Yeah, but only women would do that. Yeah. If the nurses now were like 90% men, they'd be like, ah, oh, we should hang on to the summer there and see what goes. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. we'll go protesting in July. They'd the be lads. cooking sausages on an old instant barbecue. <laughs> lads would go, would, would call a strike, you know, when the Euros are on. Yeah. <laughs> Her name is uh, Phil Ni Shagda. Shagda? Grand. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Tough, tough fucking tough woman. woman man. Tough woman to negotiate So the hair Yeah lads would be like well, well, you know, When are we going for our walkout Well you know Brazil are playing England The two <laughs> In the World Cup quarter final We might go on then You know yeah. Okay our next award The Fair Fox Award The Johnny's Award For the Fair Fox of the year Go on Has to be only Really one man is It's Tyson Fury The boxer Yeah Fair Fox him He came back Now and in fairness I was never a fan of Tyson Fury mm. I thought he was a bit just a bit of nine cliche in singing in the ring like a simpleton and then he fought Klitschko and at the press conference he came in dressed head to toe like Batman <laughs> and then proceeded to wrestle another fella dressed up as the Joker <laughs> to the ground in the middle of a press conference for a heavyweight championship fight so I, I, I didn't like him then he makes the comeback after everything admits to oh, I've had my flaws I've done drugs whatever the whole lot and then he comes back makes this um, come back and I'm not big on the whole like you know everybody declaring everything but he was great and what he done for mental health as well was good he kind of talked about it in his way he done it his own way and I listened to his interview on Joe Rogan and that's mm. what probably swung it for me actually to mm. be honest was Tyson Fury and some comeback he got robbed of the fight he should have won that fight I know it, was, it mm. was a draw but the way he handled it afterwards was, you know he wasn't sour mm. grapes I just thought he was class and, and he, he deserves the fair fucks award by and he's gas, right? His interviews are brilliant. I'll fight anyone, you bum. You're a dirty dosser. Come over here, I'm the king. The king of the gypsies, right? He went up to what weight? He said like 400 pounds or... Yeah, 450 yeah, pounds. Yeah, I think he had to lose 80 kilograms or something for his fight. Or <laughs> Some something. weight. Like, yeah, 60 kilograms. That's a human. Yeah. That's like me. I'm about that weight. Like, yeah. you know, to lose me. Mm. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. And he did it through a ketotonic diet, which is horrible. Like, you don't eat carbs. It's just... Jesus. I actually... Isn't he, I, I'm going to go with you on Tyson yeah, Fury yeah. But I thought who deserved to mention Was the Wexford Hurlers hmm? Yeah because we're saying That Davy Fitz was going to leave Yeah And they got a bust A whole lot of them busted From Wexford up to his gaff Yeah 
and arrived in and just had a chat with him. And I thought, like, that's GA player power now in, like, a sensible way. They're yeah. like, we want this now. We're not going to cause a big scene on the QT. They told no one about it. Yeah. They went up and they got him. That's true. I think um, you should also try it for the Irish hockey team as well. Yes. The World Cup final. That was some achievement. So. That's yeah. unreal. Getting to any World Cup finals last year. And just a quick mention, uh, Hard Bastard Award for 2017, if I could, seeing as we weren't doing it back then. A man called Shane Finn from Kerry ran 24 marathons in 24 days. Fuck. For charity. She's only giving up and have to do warm for a match. Yeah, <laughs> just, just that's, that's hardcore shit. Jeez, that's crazy. Yeah, fair play to him. Now, the two Johnny's Hall of Fame, Johnny. Yeah. You want to induct someone into the Hall of Fame? I do. Um, of course, our favourite, posthumously, to uh, Wishy Fogarty, the commentator from Kerry. Mm. Absolute legend of the game. Probably could have probably could have gone on and worked with RT or whatever. He was mm. fantastic. Yeah. He and passed away in 2018. Passed away. Just type him into YouTube and just soak him up enjoy him. Yeah, there's some great clips there. You want to really check that out. So he's the first person ever to be inducted into the Two Johnnies Hall of Fame with his Johnnies Award. So... We're going, we to try go. and, we're going to try and contact these winners and send them something. Yeah. I don't know what. Don't know. We'll get, them, we'll get a little A4 certificate done up. Yeah, we'll get something done up, lads. We'll be we, in the post. Yeah, go on to Smile or Cork, the jeweler there. And we'll I get, will. I will. I'll get on. Oh, we'll get on. medals like you're under, after winning under 12s. Summer camp medals. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. There we go. Perfect. Lads, that's it for the awards. We're going to move on. Last week, he shocked the nation with his true story of a man who went deaf after looking and none in the eye. God knows what he's got in store for us this week. It's time for Noel's News. Noel's News. It's Noel's News. I'm young fella. Well, Noel, it's good to have you back here again. Thank you. How are you? I'm fine. Did you watch back last week's now? Seeing as though you're you're on camera now and stuff. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> See those those things there. I was fucking wondering what you were doing in here. <laughs> new lights. Yeah, new lights. Yeah. I thought they were feng shui. <laughs> feng shui. <laughs> um, I don't know much about China now, but <clears throat> um, on on terms of news, uh, I was telling you last week. Dermot got a new dog. Yeah. After Flannery's. Yeah. Now it's all going well. Little Bunty. Happy out. Lovely bitch. Um, Dermot's best bitch. <laughs> uh, but didn't he fucking he bring her into the shamrock the other day? Or did he get ate in the spud? And didn't she eat the volivant of Squinty Delaney's place? <laughs> <laughs> now you know the squint. <laughs> He had one eye looking at Dermot and the other eye looking at Guilty Moore. <laughs> right? But like, you have to keep him with him. He oh is yeah. a driving instructor, you know. Um, and I squinted like a dog. At the dog. <laughs> Margaret came down anyway and she said, Dermot, take that bitch home. <laughs> okay, so. And why I talk about dogs, um, I like dogs, but there's a dog in Germany, right, causing trouble. As only bad bitches can. <laughs> right? Did you ever hear of a pug? Oh, yeah, the little dogs. They're half Labrador, half ferret. You know what <laughs> Right? And it makes kind of a noise. Like, if you heard the car making it now, I'd say you'd be putting a match to it and getting your fucking insurance money out of it. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, anyway, this family in Germany, a German family, in the town of Alhen, owned, they owed the, the city council heap money, big money. Probably, I don't know, water tax, Goat tax, whatever people pay out there. Taxes, yeah. Um, do most people still have goats in their yard? I don't think so. No, they're not not as popular as once were. Not in Ireland, anyway. No, just we always had a guard goat. When we were growing up. Yeah, just he butt the fucking legs off you. <laughs> and yeah, when anyone came in, he was some goat now to make noise. And he'd be barn and bleating all night now. Bleating. That's what a goat does. The goat bleats. All right. Yeah, all night. Seven years <laughs> I went without getting sleep. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> Not a bother to me. Seven years no sleep. That's a fact. And no one broke in. <laughs> good guard goat now. The mo- he was screeching. The mother named him Elvis. <laughs> Said they sounded the same. She was a tough woman now, in fairness to her, my mother. Um, what are you talking about? Uh, tax, right. They owed the city council tax. And the council sent out the bailiff, give me the money, no money to be got. The man in the house, it's a true story, the man in the house was disabled and he was in a wheelchair. 
right? And they said, we're going to take the wheelchair off you. I swear to God, right? And he needed it, like he was disabled. He wasn't just fucking pulling wheelies on the stage with a crack, like he, he needed a chair. And they're going to take the chair off him. Right? So they said the most valuable thing in the house was the dog. The pull, pug. Pull the wheelie. <laughs> Have a bit of respect. Have a bit of respect. So they sold, they took the dog, took the pug. I just picture. <laughs> 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 Oh, a bit of respect, a bit of decorum. The dog, right? They took the dog, the pug, and the city council they sold the dog on eBay, right? Which is the German Bebo, <laughs> and they got seven hundred and fifty euro. Um, and this woman who bought who bought the dog. <laughs> well, I'm delighted you find it so amusing. <laughs> Right, how mu- how much did they get for the dog? I'm after telling you. Seven hundred and fifty euro. Goodbye. Now the woman who bought the dog said she expected to pay at least twice that. That's fucking twice seven fifty, about nine hundred euro. She said <laughs> she was expecting to pay quick maths. And the lady who bought the bitch after council is suing the council because she said she sold me a dud, a dud dog. Right? They said the dog is fine. Full NCT in the dog. And in the dog, after costing the new owner 2,000 grand <laughs> in operations. Wow. Ha, 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 ha. She should have got a goat. <laughs> <laughs> if a goat needs an operation, it's fucking Operation Lamb Casserole. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, because the dog was broke up and we had all these operations and you want to have to buy it. Now, the previous owner, the pug, she said she was happy that the new owner is looking after the dog because she had the money. Dog couldn't got the operation, so the happy story in the end. Oh yeah, kinda. You know what I mean? But I'm just glad to see the council taking a bit of action. Do you know what I mean the council over here? Did you not? Did that? Did that child tax ever come in? What? What was that? A tax on children? Did that ever come in? No. I don't think so. There was talk of that for a while. Did that come in? No. No. That's fucking last time I vote for the communists. You know what I mean? <laughs> Now, my second story of the week, the caravan of love, right? It's not Martin King and Tremor. <laughs> <laughs> it's not TV3 anchor Martin King uh, in Tremor. Boom, boom. And I ain't talking about the hurdy-gurdies, dad. <laughs> so. This is down in Spain, right? España. It's the Wexford of Europe, Okay. <laughs> Well, at least you can understand the Spanish. Fucking queer bad in Wexford. Now, the countryside in Spain is fucked. You know, I'm not a man to mince words. <laughs> countryside is fucked. All the young people are moving to the cities. Mm. They're all trying to get into the Facebook. Right? Back in my day, it was a telephone book. <laughs> if you wanted to be cool, you had to be in the telephone book. Before that, you would just dial a random number and be like, is that Jim Ryan? <laughs> and they'd say, no, this isn't Jim Ryan. And I'd say, well, would you have a number for Jim Ryan? And you'd be surprised who'd have Jim Ryan's number. <laughs> you'd be surprised who'd have Jim Ryan's number. So, who's getting the brunt of it? The farmer. There's never anybody looking out for the farmer. Now, the farmer feeds the townies. And who feeds the farmer? Which brings us to the caravan of love. <laughs> the caravan is driven by a man by the name of Manolo Gozalo, whose nephew Jinxie Gozalo <laughs> is the new apprentice fitter with Donovan's. <laughs> okay? And Manolo organizes the bus, single women, mm. all the single ladies, and they drive around rural Spain and they stop at all the small towns and have a dinner dance. And the single men, mostly farmers or squirrel jockeys, whatever. The squirrel racing used to be big. Racing squirrels. Yeah. Nice. Before we had live a tree and TV shows <laughs> and all that. So at the dinner dance, organized by this crowd, all the single men and all the single women, they dance and they talk and sometimes they find love. Mm. 
And sometimes they just get a good ride. <laughs> but you need that too. So, <laughs> yes. Um, but some people have been giving out about it, saying that it commoditizes women. Mm. Okay? And one bus was spray painted alongside the bus. La Muda no es ganado. A woman is not cattle. We know that. We fucking know that. Like, if you're not happy with the cattle, at least you can get a few pounds from them. <laughs> a woman costs you big money. You're trying to get rid of a wife. Mm, big money. Farm. Uh, well, or a good row. <laughs> 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 a good row with her people. <laughs> now, uh, one, cop, one couple who are very happy on this caravan love. This is a good idea now, I think. This should be brought in around rural Kerry and all these places, trying to get lads. G'd up. Lads back G'd up again. There's one man by the name of Antonio Serrada. He's a 52-year-old goat farmer from the village of Pradea de Atenza. And the population of the village is 10. <laughs> 10 people. That's a fact. Jeez. Deserted. Nobody there. It's like a Bob Geldof concert. <laughs> oh. Now, Antonio met Maria Carvajal, who was a cleaner from Colombia, working in Madrid. Mm. And she wanted to meet a man, so she got in the bus. And she said, they're at the dinner dance, and Antonio was staring at her across the dance floor, right? And she went over and said, do you want to dance? Mm. And he said, I can't dance. So she sat down. And she said, he kept staring at me. I'd be ringing the fucking barracks. <laughs> <laughs> Something wrong with that fella. But she went over and they had a drink. Two years later, the village has a population of 12. Aww. Herself and the baby. Aww. Isn't that nice? Little Anto Jr. She was no fool by. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but also, I think he lives on a goat farm with his brother. And he's after marrying a cleaner. She's found love. He's found Mrs. Dial. <laughs> <laughs> Now, so uh, just quickly before, before I go now, uh, local news. They've started a singing group in town. Right. That's a fact. Okay. Have you been invited? No. That's funny, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, if any of your listeners would like to hear Maura Duggan murder Caledonia, they can head upstairs in the Shamrock Lounge, 8 p.m. every 7th Thursday. <laughs> it's actually very good. Uh, Martin Tobin did the crappy buy. <laughs> now I forgot most of the words, but like I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it now. <laughs> and there was a few lads from the men's shed. Yeah, I've seen this. The men's shed. This is where lads go and they kind of pal around when they retire, mm. and they don't drink. Just having a little crack. There's no drinking, no riding. It's like the time I was dating Enya. Say, <laughs> <laughs> up all night reading poetry. What a fucking shite! I had to give her the flick. Get out. <laughs> So the men's shirt, anyway, all the lads play guitar. Yeah. yeah. Frank McCarthy brought the whistle, and he will have to use it. <laughs> and then Paul Lynch had the banjo, and just we were going well. Next thing, who comes in? Only fucking Francis Dwyer with the concertina. Well, I kicked him back down that fucking stairs. Say that now. <laughs> he used to play with Mike Denver. Do you know that? Did he? Francis did, yeah. He did a big tour with him. All the top venues. The, the tour arena, and <laughs> Kill Ross, and, and the Maggot, and Wellington Bridge, and the Don... Slans and Anagassin and Hawkins and Swinford and did all the big venues. And then they came to town and oh, the whole town was out. Can't wait to hear Francis playing with the big band, Mike Denver's band. And now I'd never heard them before. This is years ago. They came to town. And as soon as they started playing the first song, I went completely blind. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as Mike Denver started singing, oh my gosh. I went completely blind. As a fact. <laughs> As a bat. <laughs> Stone blind. Right? And I did not regain my sight for two months <laughs> until I was cured by the healing hands of Mary Black. <laughs> that is a fact. That is a fact. <laughs> I'm going to bring in the newspaper curtains. Local man goes blind from listening to my tent. <laughs> It was a big story at the time. A big story at the time. Because I know good music. I have musical pedigree. You do? Yeah, I was nearly big. Um, I was nearly a big act. 
back in America in 1970s. Go away. Yeah, I was over in New York and I was I got tangled up with the, the band. They were called Ram Jam. Did you ever hear Ram Jam? No. Well, <laughs> the singer was a horny goat. <laughs> and a fair few women got a bit of his Ram Jam. They don't know. <laughs> Did you ever hear that song, Black Betty? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's Ram Jam. Oh, all right. Ram Jam. And do you know when your man says, Whoa, oh, oh, Black Betty. Bam, bam. I came up with the Bamalam. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> I came up with the Bamalam. No way. That was me on the record. Really? Yeah, do it there. You go, whoa. Whoa, Black Betty. Bamalam. <laughs> <laughs> the next line is, whoa, Black Betty. Bamalam. <laughs> Black, Betty, Black Betty got a job. Bamalam. <laughs> go on. What is that thing? Damn yeah. thing, girl. By my land. <laughs> oh, Black Betty. By my land. <laughs> oh, Black Betty. That was me. By my land. That's amazing. <laughs> that's, that's, the people in this podcast are learning something new every week. No, you, you didn't fucking know that. No, oh, that's amazing. Yeah. That's probably the biggest thing we've ever had on the most news. <laughs> well, I... I was going. I thought I was going to be a big star. Yeah. You know, and like the Hollywood parties. You know, the free sandwiches. It was, it was a big life. You know, but then the fucking the father wasn't well. Ah. Uh. And I came home. I was afraid one of my brothers get the farm. <laughs> 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 I came out of it. I had to come home, put my steak in, put my fucking steak in. <laughs> so that's my news for now. Good man, Noah. Privilege is all this. Bam and lamb. Pam and Pam, bye. Perfect. Good man, thanks. Come on, good luck. See you next week. Pam and 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 Pam and